This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. So far when we've discussed polygon modeling, we've been dealing with single surfaces. It is possible to have multiple polygon surfaces in the scene. In fact, you can combine separate polygon surfaces to make them single polygon nodes. And you can separate out parts of a single surface and turn it into a new surface. And that combination and or separation can be useful for modeling sometimes. I've gone back to my banana model that I built earlier. And we've discussed how you can delete faces. And if I delete some faces on this, this will lead to separation. We can talk about separation more. For instance, if I go to right mouse key and pick face and delete this center column, I've separated two halves of the banana. Now, even though they appear separate because there's a gap here, they're really still the same node. In fact, if I go back and open the outliner, you can see there's a single polygon surface node here called pcube one. And in fact, banana was originally based on the primitive cube, so that's why it has that name. But in any case, even despite this gap, there's only a single polygon surface. Now, it is possible to separate out one half of this banana and make it a brand new node. There's actually a tool for that. If I select all the faces on this side, for instance, and go up to Mesh, I can apply Separate. There's no options on this. You just apply it once those faces are selected. What happens is the right side that I had selected turns white and the left side is left green. If I go back to the outliner, what happens is what used to be named PCube1 is turned into a group node. It gets a little plus sign. If I expand that, you'll see that below it are two poly surfaces. Poly surface one is the right side which I had selected, and poly surface two is the left side which I did not have selected. So the tool has turned those into two separate polygon surfaces and placed them underneath the group node. Let's take a look at the hypergraph. Hypergraph hierarchy looks a little bit different there. Sometimes it's easier to see group nodes in the hypergraph. So you have a group node at the top and your two surfaces. Now you can poly surfaces out of the group if you want. There's a couple of different ways to do that. One is to pick one of the nodes, say poly surface one, which is the right side, and then go up to edit, unparent. Unparent does the opposite of parent. Unparent pulls that node out of the group without destroying the group. So by applying unparent, that right side surface is pulled out, the group's still intact. Another way to get rid of a group, and this is more permanent, is to pick the group node, go up to edit, and go to ungroup. Ungroup's the opposite of group. Ungroup destroys the group node and pulls whatever children are underneath the group node out of that group. So by using unparent and ungroup, I've gotten rid of the group, and now I have my two separated surfaces as separate nodes. Now note that the separate tool requires some kind of gap. In other words, it needs to understand they're separate pieces. So by having this missing set of faces, I was able to apply that tool. Now, you might not always have the luxury. There's another trick you can apply, though, which I'll show you. I'm going to open up this banana scene again. And this scene is saved in your Working Files folder for Chapter 5. I'm just going to reopen this. I'm not going to save this version. And here's that banana again. Now, let's say I wanted to separate out some faces but not have a gap. Here's a trick. What you can do is select the entire object, make a copy of it, go up to Edit, Duplicate, just regular Duplicate, copy comes in on top of the old one. Now, just for now, I'm going to move it aside so I can see. I'm going to go to a side view. There's my two bananas. Now, what I can do is, I'll go to shading first so you can see it better. What I can do is, on one copy, delete one half of the faces. On the other copy, delete the opposite set of faces. So, for instance, at the top here, I'm going to go back to face and delete these faces right here. And then on this copy, I'm going to go down here and delete the opposite set of faces. So I've wound up with my two halves by deleting opposite sets of faces on the original as compared to the copy. Now, if I select this top one as an object, what I can do is return to its original position so it looks like they meet up. And one trick for doing that is to go to the channel box. Now, if you start with your object at 0, 0 position, if you move a part away, you can return it to 0, 0, 0 by entering those values in the channel box. So I can enter 0 for translate Y. It goes back to its initial position. So now I have this banana where it looks like it's a single piece, 
because the borders line up, in other words, the edges line up nice and neat. But in fact, it's two separate nodes. You can see this one is called P cube one by a channel box, and this one's called P cube two because it was a copy, and Maya simply gave it a higher number. So again, the trick to doing that is to make a copy of your object, delete one half of it, or delete the faces you don't want, and then delete the opposite set of faces on your original, and if you need to, move the copy back to where it started. Now you have to keep in mind that for that to work, you need to start with the object at zero, zero, zero. In fact, that brings up a good tool called Freeze Transformation. I want to open this banana one more time so we can take a look. All right, so this model is left in its original location. Remember, I started with a cube, did some extrusions, and some various modeling steps. But the banana was never moved. Because it was left in that original position, it maintains the 0, 0, 0 position in the channel box. So for instance, if I was to move this, and say I wanted to get it back to its original position, I can go back to the channel box and enter a zero. And now it's back to zero, zero, zero. Now, in terms of freeze transformation, what you can do is move this someplace different. Let me turn on the grid so you can see the environment. Let's say I move this someplace totally different. I can even rotate it. I just use the hotkey for rotate or scale it. Hotkey for scaling. Now, even though the transformations are not zero any longer, I can choose to make this its default state by doing what's called freeze transformations. Freeze transformations will zero everything out in terms of translate and rotate and give it a one scale. So if I go up to modify, there's freeze transformations. Sometimes it's good for animation or even just modeling to take something in a new position and say, well, that's going to be my new start position. So by applying freeze transformations, you'll see that the translate and rotate zeroed out, that's the new default position, and scale set to one. So in any case, freeze transformations is kind of handy for zeroing out transformations. And now since it's zeroed out, if I were to move this someplace else, again, I can always get it back to its new default position by entering zero for the translate x, y, and z. All right, so we talked about separate and we talked about freeze transformations. I'm gonna talk about combine too. I'm gonna go back and open up this model one more time. Let's say I repeat some of my earlier steps, delete out these central faces, pick the right faces, go back up to mesh separate, make that a separate model, and go to my hypergraph this time. And I'm going to delete this group node by going to edit, ungroup, now I have two separate nodes. Now, you do have the ability to recombine these nodes if you want to work with a single surface. Now, we're starting with a single model here, but it could be two separate parts of some object separately, and you felt you wanted to combine them together. The trick for that is to simply select those parts you want to combine, those two nodes in this case, and go up to Mesh, Combine. We'll try with the defaults first, Combine. And what it does, is it gives you a brand new combined poly surface. Now, the old ones are still left over, at least in terms of history, and that's why you see these two sets of nodes on the left here. But you do have a new combined poly surface towards the right here in the hypergraph. In this case, it's called poly surface three because Maya just counted upwards. Now, you can get rid of the old history here by selecting that new combined poly and going up to edit, Delete by type history, deleting the history on this. So we delete the history, those old reference nodes go away, and now I have one combined polygon surface. So you can take two or more polygon surfaces, either touching or separated by distance, like this particular example, and combine them into a single surface once again. Now I can take this even further if I wanted to. Since I've recombined this, I can merge these vertices together. Now that's something that's important with merge is you cannot merge vertices as separate surfaces. So I know we did that with the briefcase, but the briefcase was a single surface. In order to merge two halves of this banana, I do have to use combine first. But since I have combine applied, and it's a single node now, I can go to vertex, turn on my vertices, and I don't even have to move them in this case. What I can do is pick opposite pairs, and then go to edit, mesh, merge. 
I'm going to check the option box this time because we didn't previously. Option box on merge. And one important thing with merge is there's a threshold which is based on distance. If you try to merge two vertices and they don't merge together, it's probably because this threshold's too small. What this says is that the vertices are farther apart than this value in world space, do not merge them. So what I can do to be safe though is just turn up the slider all the way. It just means that any vertices or any pair of vertices within 10 units of each other get merged. So that should merge. So I'll merge. You'll see by merging them without moving them, they're drawn together towards the center, their average position. So I can go to pairs here, continue to merge. If I go all the way around the banana with these pairs, I'll have resealed the surface. So if you're going to combine two separate polygon surfaces together, this might be one way that you can seal up any gaps. So I can just continue to pick pairs. I'm using my camera shortcut keys to move the camera around, so I'm making sure that I select the correct pair. I don't want to select some incorrect vertex because I might get some weird stretching or pinching. Select some incorrect vertice because just like that, I accidentally picked three and I got it pinched there. So I want to make sure to undo that and then pick that pair and merge and merge this pair until I get down to the final gap here and merge that. And there we go. I merged all those pairs of vertices from opposite sides of that banana. It's able to do that because I used combine the two separate halves and merge has sealed up that gap and made it nice and neat.